It's very important when people are still able to put on muscle that they put on as much as possible because once you're in the over 50 category, you're kind of clawing on for dear life and trying to keep as much of that muscle as possible. So I don't really want people entering middle age with a muscle deficit. If someone's under 50, so let's say you're 30 or 40, do you think it's important that they err on the side of caution and eat less protein based on the research? Or do you still think no matter what age you are, protein is so important and that everyone should be getting as much as possible of it? I think it depends on how much muscle mass that person has. So if you have an individual who's overnourished and adequately muscled, right? So they're overweight, but they actually have a sufficient amount of muscle mass and they need to go into a caloric deficit, we would certainly tolerate also a little bit of a protein deficit in that individual. Not because I think it's necessary, but because I think it's easier to hit caloric targets if you are able to relax your protein targets. In other words, if you say you need to be in a caloric deficit and hold one gram of protein per pound of body weight, that becomes really challenging. If you say, look, you could be at 0.6 to 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight, and critical caloric deficit is much easier. Conversely, if a person is overnourished and under-muscled, I think we do have to toe that fine line of keeping protein high because that person needs to be putting on muscle as they're losing fat. And the truth of it is, I don't find the data for people below 50 having an increase in mortality with high protein being at all convincing. I think, that, I think that is easily attributed to caloric excess as opposed to protein excess. And I think that there are enough other confounders there that it's really a proxy for poor health than it is a proxy for high protein. Furthermore, the absolute mortality in people below 50 is so low in terms of absolute amounts that even a slight increase in the relative amount is trivial. Finally, it's very important when people are still able to put on muscle that they put on as much as possible because once you're in the over 50 category, you're kind of clawing on for dear life and trying to keep as much of that muscle as possible. So I don't really want people entering middle age with a muscle deficit. This kind of goes back to our original question. Like even if someone comes up with the solution for cancer and Alzheimer's disease and all of these other things, you still have to ward against frailty. You still have to make sure that you enter that marginal decade physically robust. And most people don't come close to it. They're really, really under-muscled late in life. And another question we get asked a lot is, how do you eat so much protein in a day? As we're kind of going through Peter protocols, why don't you just run us through your protein per day and what that looks like? Again, I have the luxury of being at home. So it's, um, you know, I have more control over what I eat than if I was you know, back on the road, but I get a lot of it through venison. Um, so, you know, Maui Nui, again, disclosure, I'm an investor in that company. Um, they make a really, really good venison jerky stick. And I love it because it has no garbage in it. It's literally just got some natural flavors in it. I absolutely love the taste of it. So that makes life easy. And each stick, I eat the peppered ones, has like 9.9 .9 grams of protein in it. It's funny, the USDA makes you, or I don't know if it's the USDA or whichever governing body determines food labeling, you have to round down. So it says nine grams of protein on the stick, but it's actually 9.9 .9 grams is what it measures. So I actually think of each stick as having 10 grams of protein. So I will easily throw down five to 10 of those sticks a day, and th that would represent one versus two high protein snacks. And then the rest of it, I'm kind of getting in my food, basically. I, lately, I haven't really been doing much on the protein shake front because I'm getting more from the, the bars, uh, sorry, the jerky sticks are just quicker and easier for me to then make in a shake. But, but I would also, you know, use a high quality whey protein shake if necessary. So it's not that hard for me to kind of hit my, hit my goals throughout the course of a day. And by the way, what am I targeting? You know, I'm sort of targeting you know, somewhere between 150 and 180 grams of protein per day. And how often is that spread out between? Typically like four hits. I've been in plenty of meetings with you where you'll walk in with just a handful of jerky sticks, drop them on the table. You'll be like, anyone else want one? And then within 15 minutes, they're all gone <laughs> and all the wrappers are right in front of you. So I can attest that I've seen you do that protocol for sure.